Volt's most critical feature is browser data binding. Data binding gives Volt the ability to react to data changes in real time. Typically, data binding is used to update the UI when UI data changes, but it doesn't always need to be related to the UI. For simplicity, I'll do today's example in the terminal just to show the key concepts of reactive data binding in Volt. I'll build a simple Ruby class that prints to standard out when data changes, and then I'll move on to advanced features like reactive accessor. I've created a person class that has a name attribute. Person is a plain old Ruby object, and in the next scene, I'll show you the source code. For now, just know that it's a plain old Ruby class with a getter and setter for the name attribute. I'm writing this class manually instead of using a Volt model because I want to show the simplicity of the underlying APIs. The next thing I want to show you is a method you can call on prox called the dot watch. The dot watch method is added by Volt and is not part of standard Ruby. What it does is it fires the proc every time the data inside of it changes. In my case, I want to observe the Rick object and then reactively print to the screen every time the data changes. You'll notice that the first time I called watch, the proc was called. I'll explain what's going on there a little bit later. Let's take a look at what happens when I change the data again. You'll see here that when the data changed, it reran the contents of the proc, which caused puts to be called again. How is that possible? Let's take a deeper look and find out. As we just saw, Volt Framework extends the proc class with a method called watch. The code runs once on instantiation and again whenever the data changes. As we just saw, data bindings start out by watching a proc. Deep within the Volt Framework internals, that usually means stuff relating to templates, views, and rendering. As you saw in my example though, it doesn't explicitly need to relate to rendering or the DOM. In my case, I was just messing around with standard out. Now let's take a look at the source code for that person class I showed you earlier. Let's step through the source code one piece at a time. The first thing watch does is return something called a computation object. You might have noticed this computation object in the first example when I was in the terminal. A computation object acts as a wrapper for the proc object. This might sound complicated at first, but just think of it as a way to bundle up code for when you need to run it later. Do you remember how our proc was fired right after I called dot watch on it within the example earlier? That's because computations run a proc after being created. While running the proc in the example, we made a call to rick.name. That, in turn, made a call to dot .depend on a dependency object. But what is a dependency object? At its core, a dependency object keeps track of which proc must run when data changes. Dot .depend takes the current computation object and stores it in the dependency to accomplish this. Now, moving along to those data changes, we see the setter makes a call to dot changed. This is how Volt knows that it's time to rerun dependencies. Dot changed looks at a list of framework internal computation objects and knows exactly whether or not the proc needs to run again. It's the main reason for Volt's rendering efficiency. Armed with this information, we can now see that this is exactly what's going on inside of content binding. At their core, Volt models and content bindings work together using proc.watch and dependency.changed to keep models and views in sync with each other. If we wanted to extend Volt's templates to work with things other than model objects, we could easily do so using the technique from the previous scene. But there's one other way to do it inside of a controller. If you ever need to add one-off attributes to a controller and that value is not a Volt model, you can do so using Reactive Accessor. Similar to Adder Accessor on regular Ruby objects, this method allows you to define properties on your controller that conform to Volt's data binding scheme. If you've ever failed to log into a Volt app, then you've already seen Reactive Accessor in action.
Volt user management controllers use Reactive Accessor to reactively keep track of login information and display it to the user instantly. As you see in this example, an errors attribute is defined on the controller. Later on, in the failure branch of the login action, the attribute is used to temporarily store errors from the server. This is just one of many possible use cases for Reactive Accessor in Volt. That's all for today's episode, and it was definitely one of the more advanced ones we've covered. So if it doesn't quite make sense or you have some questions, feel free to leave a comment on the blog or on YouTube. If you like the video, please consider subscribing to our newsletter for occasional updates about new content.